This is a Kirkendall Barrett presentation, darling. <laughs> you can touch it if you want. Ladies, if you want to meet a man, check your storage cloud. Come on, Kendall, take off your shirt and go camera shopping at Best Buy. Good shirtless, not bad shirtless. Yeah. Well, it was gratuitous. Yeah, it was. I like a good grizzled man sometimes. A lifetime of Hallmark. Well, hello, everybody. It is your favorite day of the week. It is time for another episode of A Lifetime of Hallmark, where we talk about your favorite movies on both Lifetime and the Hallmark Channel and try to make sense of them. I am Les Kirkendall Barrett. Hello, Jason Bowers. Hello, Les Kirkendall Barrett. And hello, Kurt Fitzpatrick. Hello, Les Kirkendall Barrett of SAG After Strike fame. And hello, Jason Bowers. <laughs> Hi. I tell you what, this, okay, so, so listeners, I, so I've been striking for the past week, you know, because, uh, SAG AFTRA is striking and I was striking at Netflix the other day and someone took a picture of me and recorded me striking and I have So my picture has appeared on the cover of the Wall Street Journal, of Reuters. I've been seen on the BBC, Entertainment Tonight, Extra, and the local news. Mm -hmm. So, calls like I saw someone else is like I saw you on CNBC. So this picture is seriously like the gift that keeps on giving. So. Are, you so know. you're like becoming famous, not from your your work as a performer covered by SAG after the union. You're becoming super famous for literally striking against SAG after. I'm being and being disgru- I'm becoming famous for being disgruntled. Yes. <laughs> well, not, he's striking with SAG after. Not yes. Not against yeah. you. You could, uh, yes. Well, sorry, exciting. sorry. Gay against the studios. Apologies. You yeah. could carve out a little niche in these lifetime Hallmark movies as disgruntled man, like the neighbor or whatever. Uh, oh, I would do that in a second. Yeah, I would well, totally is, do that. Well, anybody's listening, they gotta hop on this. Yes. Well, when I can work again, I mean, bear is hot. Is hot stuff right now. Oh, that's well, right. What, you can't work anyway. Yeah, I can't work it right. You can't now. even write your own thing now. No, I can't write my own part for a Hallmark movie. I think think the loophole for you is you write a stage show to complement your other stage shows. And then once things uh, go back to work, then you adapt it and then you perform it on film. Right. No, No, seriously. And then I just realized something because I was thinking about maybe, you know, it's been a while since we've. We had our friend Meredith Thomas on. Maybe I should ask her. She's not allowed to do our our show right now. Well, she could do our show. No. She just can't promote anything she's doing. Yeah. Like, she can't talk about, like, if she's in a movie right. or something. Like, we could talk about, like, that. hey, what's going on in your day, but we can't talk about it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. She can't promote things. Yeah, we, we can't say who she is, maybe. I don't know. There's, I was listening. there's all kinds of rules. Because there's, yeah. there's things that you can do. Like yeah. I think you could do public access. So Robin Bird is okay. But <laughs> Robin Bird, she's still around. Yeah, she is. <laughs> we oh, talked about how old is she? Like ninety? Uh she's probably in her eighties. <laughs> I'm Facebook Robin friends Bird with her. Is... Robin Bird she's was striking. on TV. I'm, I'm sure she is. <laughs> she was on <laughs> TV when I lived access. in New York. In like the late eighties, yeah. she was on TV. We should. I should go and and strike outside like the Manhattan public access. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, you yes. need to get Robin Bird to do this show. I, I'll, I'll reach I'll out. Write that down. Where's my pen? I'm Facebook yes. friends with yeah, her. I'll ask her. Out. She'll come on. I used to hey, watch okay. the Robin yeah, Bird show every day. <laughs> That's hilarious. I would die if Robin Bird came on this show. I We're mean, making her watch a Hallmark movie. movie. Though. Yeah, Hallmark. <laughs> yeah, Hallmark herself, though. Um, <laughs> For those of you who don't strike. know, Robin Bird is a former a former adult actress mm-hmm. her claim to fame was that she was on debbie does dallas oh i didn't know that i didn't know that yes. either yes that's how she she's very famous. new york robin robin bird's very very is very new york mm-hmm. 
They uh, actually and, and then, they um, spoofed her on SNL at least once, maybe a couple of times. Sherry O'Terry played her. Yeah, yes, I'm I'm impressed that Robin Bird is still around. Well, she's Can impressed with you, you going out and striking. Wasn't she yeah. New York based public access? I'm yeah, correct, yes. right, yeah, that, yeah. Right, that she was right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I yes. so. yeah. Robin Bird was a uh, very New York. Yeah. I've been mad about the strike. I'm surprised because I haven't like worked on like a, a side job in over a year. I'm mad about the reason why everybody's mad. This is the whole AI thing that gets me mad. Mm-hmm. Well, yes, that they want to take somebody's think- image, you know, for like one. They want to pay like 150 dollars, scan your image, and and just use this thing indefinitely. And I'm thinking about all the people I've met over the years who. You know, get in, get into acting, get extra extra work, and they don't have proper guidance because that career path is so uh, to this day so like uh, wild west. Yeah. The word I'm looking for, and so they don't. I I know many, I've met many people over the years who would agree to something like that. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? And and they shouldn't. Well, I think yeah. the the old version of that, which was it, at, you weren't it. it it was with you for life, but it it didn't live on beyond you would be doing stock photos or like a low budget oh, or free oh movie, God. you know, cause oh, that yeah. stuff, you know, only lives on as that one piece of call it art that you did at the time. Whereas this is like, you know, they can skin your face and they can graft it onto any body in any scenario in any point in time in any form whatsoever. They can be easily manipulated forever and ever. Right. Yeah, I don't. And then right. you end up in some bad Gary Marshall movie. Although Gary Marshall passed away, I think. He, yeah, they, I, if you ended yeah. up in a Gary Marshall movie, <laughs> no, those last Gary ones I did. I was in that stupid New Year's Eve. I'm still mad. Um, I'm mad that I that showed came up. Out. I did it. Nobody scanned me in. It was my own fault. Um, <laughs> but oh so, yeah, that, that's why I was mad. I tell you, though, striking, I've seen so many people this past week. It's like, like, uh, like yesterday, I saw um, Francis Fisher and oh. Marianne oh, Williamson. Oh, Francis Fisher. Yeah. That, that actress from, from, uh, from years ago who uh, from Titanic. Jessica Lange played her in a, in a no, movie. No, that's Francis Farmer. <laughs> oh, okay. Because that would be impressive. Francis Fisher. Oh, she played yeah. Kate Winslet's mother in Titanic. She's oh, married to Clint geez. Eastwood, or she's with Clint Clint Eastwood. For a oh long time. yeah, she was. Yeah, yeah. I saw Marianne okay. Williamson. I don't know who was that. She's front of her president, dude. Yes, she's who? in SAG. I guess so. She was she was protesting. I Mary Ann uh, Williams. Yeah, she said? so she she ran on uh, uh to try and get on the Democratic ticket last time, and then she's running again. She's the really like new agey one. Oh, that that woman. Yeah, yeah. I, didn't, I knew yes. her. Yeah, I just, I just didn't know her name. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, I saw a oh, she's there just from seen RuPaul's it. Drag Race. Boy, Les, it's a good thing you're there because nobody else knows who these people are. Um. Oh, you know what? I saw somebody today from The Good Place. From that show that you like, Jason. Oh, I love that. Jamila, her name Jamila, is Jamila Jamil. Jamil. Oh, I love her. You would yeah. love her too, Les. Like, just her personality. You would love her. I need to start watching, because my friend who I was, I was with a couple of friends today, and my friend started, like, flipping out. Like, oh, my God, it's Jamila Jamil from The Good Place. Mm-hmm. So, and everybody well, I've I talked to yeah. loves that show. So, I need to sit down and watch it. I'm only familiar with the show. I auditioned for it a few times, mm-hmm. but I never watched it. It is my favorite show of all time. I've never seen it. What is wrong with both of you? End this podcast now. I did start. I did start watching The West Wing. So, uh, okay, finally, you guys don't care about that. Oh, Actually, in the West well, Wing holds up. I saw Johnny Knoxville today. <laughs> and a networking event. Um, who else? Adam, that guy, Adam from Adam ruins everything. Oh well, he's yeah. like the WGA strike captain, isn't he? Yes. Yeah. Okay. He's really, really well versed on, at least, you know, from the WGA's perspective, what they're looking for. If you ever want an explainer as to, like, like the real nitty gritty as to why at least that union is striking, just go find him talking on a podcast about it. He's really, really well versed. Yeah. 
but but yes, it's been very interesting. I've I've met people, you know, yesterday. They, it's kind of cool. Bridgerton sponsored food yesterday. And, they had a water and, ice for you, right? And the Bridger, yeah, and the Bridgerton right and coffee and the Bridgerton writers were dressed like Bridgerton. It's been very interesting. Hot out too for that stuff. Yeah. Oh, it's been. I'm going to try to do one. If I can get up to New York, I'm I'm uh, going to strike somewhere. And, and you'll I'll get go, your steps in. And I've been getting over ten steps a day. I, I can't believe it. Some actors now that they're not working. I mean, I read this thing about Gwyneth Paltrow, and I don't know if you guys want me to continue with this. Yes, please. Yeah, what? You didn't see this? No. Um, what? It was an article. It was spread around. It said that she um, was asked in, a, um, in an Instagram question. Or oh, I know what you're talking she... about. What was she asked? <laughs> she was asked if she licks ass. Okay. Okay, what well, this, is, this was in the news. This was in the news. What is the um, answer? She, her response what was... Is... Not generally, no. Not generally. That's not a no. That's not like a firm. Yeah, that's not a firm no. <laughs> it's not. It's not a hard. So, it's not a hard no. Look, I'm pointing out what the, the, the. I'm pointing out a couple things. This is the state of the news today. <clears throat> I'm pointing out the. Um, the transition that some actors do. We have someone like Mario Lopez transitioned into hosting. He's done well with that. Gwyneth Paltrow has transitioned into sort of just sharing her lifestyle. Mm-hmm. So she has to answer these kind of things. Also, I'm also sharing that Gwyneth Paltrow licks ass. And that's the most important. The, what would your niche have... be then, Kurt? That you're you're What's up that? on like the th- like sexual things that celebrities are into? That I'm 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 into that? I don't know. I'm I'm asking. Uh no, not really. But doesn't she also have a candle that smells like her lady place? She does. That is not the oh, good place. <laughs> no, uh, I'm just uh, I'm just pointing out this news story. That's all. Well, you know, <laughs> yeah. And, and, and hey, speaking of news. Do you have any black yes. China news? Doing a piece of China. 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 I'm talking China. The Black China Report. Here's Kurt Fitzpatrick. All right. This is from ExtraTV.com. Black China is speaking out after Khloe Kardashian referred to herself as a third parent to China's daughter, Dream. China Ooh. shares Dream with Khloe's younger brother, Rob Kardashian. And Coco helped plan the little girl's sixth birthday party during a recent episode of The Kardashians. During a confessional, Kardashian said, I feel like I'm like a third parent for Dream, I guess. I mean, I do know how important it is for Dream to have a great maternal influence, whether that be for me or her own mom or whatever. It's important. And whoever she gets it from, she gets it from. Now, Black China, a.k.a. Angela White, tells TMZ, it takes a village to raise a child. Everything is good on both ends. We are all family at the end of the day. Robert and myself are co-parenting the best we can, and it's all love and positivity, the model added. As mentioned, it takes a village to raise a child, and I'm happy that Dream has a full village full of love from both sides. As a mother, that's all I can ask for. Let's stop dragging the negativity on and all move forward. After the episode, Chloe received some backlash for the comment. She explained on Instagram stories, life is challenging enough. I hate how something so sweet as Dream's sixth birthday is getting twisted. The reality star insisted, Rob is doing the best he can as a parent and in life. Angela is doing the best she can as a parent and in life. And I am doing the best I can as a parent and in life. We are all trying to do our best in life. Our children are happy and healthy. Most of all, they are loved, loved by everyone in our tribe, Chloe said, adding that there is no Kardashians versus China narrative, insisting there really is nothing there anymore. Wait a minute. Hmm. Did Chloe refer to Black China as Angela? She sure did. That's what I heard. Wow. Well, that's what Black China like- is going by that. It's, and it sounds like maybe some of this uh, image makeover that Black China has been going through this year is 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 for real yeah because it's because weren't they like not even i don't i don't know if they were on good terms or not after the breakup but it didn't seem like they were on good terms but that might have just been the narrative that both sides were pursuing because it makes money well she sued them so 
Wow. Well, yeah, good, I for, think it's a, good for the Kardashians and, and for Black making China. It. Yeah. I would imagine, too, this is being a little bit cynical, but it's probably true that if uh, Dream or any of uh, – does is Dream the only kid with Rob? I think yeah. so. Yeah, so if Dream yeah. is yeah. on the Kardashian show, which I imagine she appears there, Black China gets some of that money. Because that's right, because mm. because aren't the, because it's it's Dream, King Cairo, and there's Zorp. a third one, right? Zorp. No, I think that's it. I thought that was so it. So Dream and King Cairo. And Zorp. I love that I know the names. We've been doing this podcast this long. <laughs> Yeah, we're trying to remember how many kids. Like, how many times we mention these people? <laughs> yeah, there's two, right? I should know this. I, I give the Black China report every week. I'm like the world extra. You're the you're the Black world China extra I'm sure world gonna... expert world extra. Yeah. By the way, you said Kurt that this appeared on Extra's website. Was this uh, before or after the story where they used Les's image? Well, this is Extra TV. Yeah. Uh, dot com. Did they use Lester's image uh, on this? Well, this well, they used they used it on the show history. TV, the TV show Extra, talking about the strike. Yeah, I think. Oh, so okay. Well, Les, I don't this see story could have here. come right after yours. I'm looking yeah. for a picture of Les on here. I don't see it. Mm, all right. Well, Next time. maybe it was a few days ago. I'm, oh, I could scroll down. Yeah. Okay, no, I don't see Les Kirkadal Barrett on here, but they don't say my name. They should. But people are people, right? You gotta tag that yeah, shit yeah. on Getty Images. All right, so let's talk about this movie. Okay. Take Me Back for Christmas. Or um, from uh, Hallmark. From Hallmark. From, yes, it's, and I got it, it's from Hallmark. And I gotta tell you, I was pleasantly surprised by this movie. Same. And. Not only, like, I cried, like, 25 minutes in. Like, I was like, it, it, because, you know, you know, oh, first of all, before we get started, so Netflix is having a gay royal movie. Is it Netflix or Amazon? Besides Netflix. Or is it Amazon? Oh, no, it's Amazon. It is Amazon. Who, whomever it is, it, I, I'm on board with watching that at some point, but perhaps after the strike. The, oh, Jason! I'm for real. <laughs> oh, me too. Me they're too. they're like know, the the streamers either. are the biggest offenders here. This is it. Oh, Outside true. of the AI, it's streaming true, residuals true, 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 true. that is the big issue. I'm not helping them out right now. Yay! True. No, you're you absolutely right. Movie. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Good. Um, but I do I want to watch the West Wing too. on a streamer. Is, is that okay? I mean, that's a little different because it's it's older. But, yeah, I mean, we're all paying money into streamers every month anyway. But not should we be promoting their newer stuff? And I'm sure their residuals would be like a nickel or something, even no. if you watched it on regular TV at this point. Yeah. The West Wing? I actually have a, like, a way yeah. that we can address this, which I'll bring up with you after the show. Ah. Ooh. Okay. Yes. Sam Seaborn. Um, I... Did not cry. I know you guys were. I did. Yeah, blubbering during this movie. Now, I, 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 I build up somewhat of a reservoir uh, during a moment of emotion, but it didn't build up enough that I had an actual st- uh, streaming. Speaking of streaming, I did not have a streaming tear mm-hmm. going down my face. I had to. I had to pause. <laughs> <laughs> who is this lovely woman who is the the lead in this? Boy. I uh, oh, don't remember her name, but I looked her I like up, her. and uh, like her big credit that we'd probably know in America is that she was on three horrible. seasons of Glee, but like the later seasons. Oh, oh, see, and I didn't watch those seasons. Neither did I, because the show had gotten terrible I by think, that point. I don't know. I think she looks a little bit like somebody I used to have a crush on. Oh, who's that? the kids still say that. Because- so that helps. Because Vanessa Lenges, yeah. L-E-N-G-I-E-S. Well, Vanessa Lenges, Vanessa Lenges is a freaking adorable. She was adorable. She was really good in the movie. Yeah, and yes. because one of the things, one of the things that I noticed is like all of them. I was like, we we've never seen any of these people before. They were all Canadian, I believe. 
Slightly look like Anna Anna Kendrick also. She had a little bit of that look to her. A little bit, yeah, mm-hmm. like the nose maybe. The the nose and the eyes. Uh-huh. Like I was never hot for Anna Kendrick, but I don't know this the, this this woman I like. Oh, I love it. I like I want to be best friends with Anna Kendrick. I love her. She's really small. Yeah. Is she really? I worked as an extra on something she was in. She was a tiny little person. Like a wafy, a wafy person. Very small, like skinny, but also very short. Just right, like a very small little person. Wafy and wafy and petite. Yeah, she was wafy. All right, so All right, let's get down to it. We start off. It's snowing. It's Christmas. It, we see a house, and there's snow everywhere. But there's sad holiday music. And we see, we see a young lady, Renee, and Renee's preparing like a a food, like a Christmas basket, like a gift basket. Yeah. And it's got like baked goods. It's got all this stuff. She's huffing a cinnamon stick. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. She's treating nothing like poppers. Right. They're sweet poppers. Poppers. <laughs> yeah. Kurt, do you know what poppers are? Have you not talked about poppers on this show of all shows? I think you have, and I, it sounds like you guys might know what it is, and I'm not, I can't, I would not be able to tell you what a popper is. You wouldn't have any need for them. <laughs> we don't know. We well, do. you might. Oh, yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, what is this? Are we, are we allowed to talk about it? We can talk yeah, about it. Sagrum. We're allowed to talk about whatever we want. We're not, the oh, only yeah. thing we're promoting here is Rush. <laughs> Rush. <laughs> uh, Rush is it's a brand of poppers. Rush, Rush is, is an inhalant. The band. Uh, not the band. Uh, they've probably done them, though. Uh, I'm sure. That you use during Rush. intercourse. Uh, men having sex with men generally are the biggest users of them uh, because it dilates things so that things can go in places easier. Yes. Well, that's what rush. So, and what is? Is it a pill? It's a it's yeah. a little bottle. Amyl nitrate is what it used to be made from, but it's not oh. that anymore. But it's like a little, almost like sniffing salts. Yes. Oh, and that's what a popper is, also. Yeah, they used to call them poppers because they yes. they were actually like medical ones that they would break open and you would sniff it to to wake up. Okay. Pops. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't. Nah, I don't. I think I'm good. Yeah. Okay. And I never liked them. Damn. Anyway, what, where were we? Oh, that's we're so funny. I love poppers. I hope no, <laughs> I hope no kids are using today's episode for show and tell. I mean, if they are, more power to them, dude. Yeah, right. They're gonna learn about anyway. uh, about a, a strong union. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. Um, the, the former life of an adult star. You learn about co-parenting, uh, and you're going to learn about um, cinnamon stick poppers. Yeah, we've covered. Yeah. We've already covered a lot. Yeah, I know, and we just started. This is an education. So, a kid could so, stay home from school and just listen to this. <laughs> Great. <laughs> All right. I'm so back our in. friend Renee is very bitter. <laughs> Renee's very bitter. It's so cute. And her husband, her husband Aaron, we find out he's the one that baked all the baked goods, but he bakes as like a hobby. You know what else this guy does? This guy directed this movie. Who, him, Aaron? The guy that played Aaron directed the movie, yeah. Oh. Oh, wow. I liked him. I agree. Uh, so so he so he was saying so he said to Renee, hey, you know, why don't we sell the house and move to New York and we can start a business and I can cook because I really like cooking. And then Renee is like, nope, because first of all, we still have medical bills, and second of all, the because uh, he was also like, we can medical sell the bills. house. And she's like, second of all. This is mom's house, and even though mom has died, I want to keep this house. What do you mean they have medical bills? What, it's like their mom's old? Uh, because the mom, mom is he dead? 
cast away. Yeah. It was it was oh, Hallmark's so way of addressing a real world problem for once. Oh, do the dead people again. I don't think you heard. I see dead people. Exactly. Hmm. And yes, remember this is the all new Hallmark. So yeah. we we address medical bills. So the mother didn't have Medicare. Uh, Even if you have uh, Medicare, you gotta, you gotta, if, if if things get hey, really bad, yeah. sometimes stuff ends up coming out of pocket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see that. It should. All right. Well, and we she, don't know what yeah, like what's going on in it, Sam's yeah. world. Maybe she had some sort of disease from those cinnamon stick That's poppers. That's true. The, yeah, right. they never explained what how she died. I would have liked to have have, have, have heard that. But this proposition is a huge risk because they say later on that this house is in Maplewood. Uh, no, where's Maplewood? Maplewood? Maplewood, New Jersey. It's in it's in North Jersey. It's pretty. Yeah. Um, it's, it's on the it's on the upper up of the uh, of the of the income level. It was a nice so, house. It was a nice yeah. house. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, that's a really that's a pretty nice pretty nice part. We um, never ever um, learn anything about the dad either. We don't know if the dad's no. uh, dead or alive, if the parents are divorced, if if he was in the daughter's life. Nothing. Dad is never nothing. mentioned. Never once mentioned. Well, this Maplewood house. They sell this Maplewood house. They're going to get some money. Their plan is to go to Brooklyn and rent. Yeah. So this plan doesn't go. It's it's, it's a big risk. What was no, funny no, about this money. moment to me is is that that was his proposal was uh, sell this house and we could go live the simpler life living in New York and paying rent in Brooklyn. I didn't understand like how that community. was a simpler life than staying in the country where everything's a lot less expensive and things but don't move were, as fast. If they're in Maplewood, they could easily they could commute to New York. Yeah. That, that, oh, is that, that close? Yeah. And at one point, one character does. Very easily during the day. Actually, a couple of them yeah. do. Yeah. In fact, there's a train station right that goes right through Maplewood. They could you they could take the train from Maplewood to, to Penn Station. Well, and he was like, "Well, and we can start over." But she, Renee put the kibosh on that anyway. Renee's like, "Nope, we're not doing that. We're staying here." Maybe that was the right decision. And so. Um, Let's start the business. She, she could do that, yeah. but not the move. So, so then Renee, so Renee, um, dr- Renee drives to, oh, then some, one of them says, oh, well, like, oh, he says, Aaron is like, well, you know, life is too short though. But then Renee hops in the car. She drives to work. She brings the basket because she gives it to her coworker, Tasha, mm-hmm. who's pregnant. And so she tells Tasha, you know, Aaron's being weird, and I think he's going through a midlife crisis because he just brought up the idea of selling the house and moving to New York. And I think something's up with him. By the way, they made a big deal. Like, I'm sorry, Kurt, go ahead. Oh, I just said, how old is this guy that she's considering this a midlife crisis? Was he like 35? Yeah, mid to late 30s, yeah. Okay. I thought they made a big deal of pointing this out when she arrives at work in her car right after she gets out, like the little check engine light comes on. Right. Right. And, and so we know there's so, trouble later. So, so, so she tells Tasha and Tasha's like, well, you know, I couldn't wait to leave the city and move into the suburbs. And, um, so she gives she gives Tasha the basket, and then their boss comes out, and their boss their boss Jeff comes out, and Jeff sees the basket, and he's like, "I thought I told you girls not to order stuff," and takes the basket. Yeah, Jeff was a dick. Yeah, he really was. You dick. Because <laughs> Jeff. Made it seem like he was oblivious and like, oh, you shouldn't be ordering stuff to put in the baskets without consulting me. I'm going to take it. And then just takes the food that he knows was intended for Tasha, the pregnant woman, and just, right. just steals it. And he's yeah, stringing and poor he's- Sam along about a, some promotion that he's never going to give her. He's a dick. Oh, that's right, because he said that he was going to retire. And when he retired, he was going to make her the manager. Yeah. 
If you and met him, what, 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 what would you say to him? I would say, you dick. <laughs> That's what I thought. Then the guy later on, he throws out the food. Yes. Yeah, the Kurt, worst. We'll get to that. But Kurt, I want to get your feelings yeah. on this because there were baked muffins and, and, uh, uh, like they looked like they looked like there were sweet baked goods. In Did there. you hear how 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 much I have? I really have a crush on this Renee woman. There's like breadcrumbs through here. At one point, she wants to eat a whole pie. She's got. <laughs> she's reading like Game of Thrones books, and she's talking about like the DVD commentary. I'm like, where's this woman? <laughs> in Maplewood. <laughs> I, my one of I have an ex girlfriend that lives in Maplewood. So, <laughs> well, she used to. So then, I don't Tasha. Know where she lives now. So, oh, so now, what did you think? So then, during this whole thing, they're talking, and there's this, there's Santa, but there's this cute little elf. What did you think of the elf, Kurt? Yeah, she was very attractive as she well. She's very cute. Yeah, Cece. I like all the ladies. The, actually, this this was stacked with ladies. I like. Or maybe I'm just feeling hormonal. I don't know. And, and so, so CC, so um, <laughs> CC tells them, "Oh, hey, you know, th- there's nobody waiting to see Santa. Why don't you all go and see Santa? Make a and wish. So, yeah, make a wish. And so Tasha goes to see Santa, and Tasha's like, "Well, Santa, I want a painless birth." And, and which I thought, well, that's very progressive for a Hallmark movie to to talk about birth and pain. Mm-hmm. And then Renee says, well, I don't want to go and talk to him. And so then Cece gives her this bell, and Cece's like, well, you know what? If you don't want to go talk to Santa, that's fine. But at least you could take the spell, and you can make a wish with it Did she and ring it. tell her about the bell at that point? I, I don't think, so. think she did. I think maybe she just gave her the bell. Oh, I yeah, think she, she just give gave her a full warning. Or I think she just... I don't think she acknowledges the bell in this moment. I think I think it's acknowledged later. Okay. So, so after this is when Renee goes and talks to Jeff, and Jeff is like, "Hey," to ask him, you know, about when he's going to retire, and he, and then he's like, "Oh, well, you know what? I'm not going to retire after all." I stand corrected. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm totally wrong, by the way. She, they, she did acknowledge it there. I'm thinking of something else. Sorry to confuse everyone. Uh, I'm a dick like uh, Jeff. <laughs> no, no, that, that's okay. So, this is where the guy is throwing out food. So, yeah, so he's eating the baked goods, and he's like, do you want, do you want any? Do you want this? And Renee's like, no. And then he throws it away, and Renee's like, oh, like my heart. Because her husband had worked hard on those, and yeah. especially since they could have just she could have just taken the, the basket and still given it to Tasha. Yep, like there was that much stuff in there. Like it was a full basket stuff. Also, Jeff, just like, say, oh, "Hey, may like I please thing. have a slice of your homemade bread?" Right. Like so, may, yeah. maybe Renee would have gotten the the promotion had she brought in food from more than just one person. But then again, he's got to steal food to yeah. get it. But then again, I'm sure that Jeff was a dick and I'm sure that she was part, partly doing it because she's like, oh, my pregnant coworker, she probably gets hungry. Like she probably gets hungry during the day. She's like, I'll bring her in some treats, some homemade treats. And she can nibble during the day and take some home to her husband. And, you know, is there a world in which Renee and Jeff had an affair and things are just tense and awkward now? Oh no! Because <laughs> Renee is. Oh, I ruined her for for Kurt. Sorry. No, oh, that's the other sliding door story. Because <laughs> Renee is very cute. And yeah, Jeff Renee's was a dick. Mind. There was nothing sexy. I I love a sexy older man, but there was nothing sexy about Jeff. Well, like, then you not- may want to watch the snow it, to to make up for the the sag. Strike! They're coming out with a bunch of reality shows. There's like stretch. I'm gonna watch out. the Old Man Bachelor. Whoa, whoa, whoa. The Olden Bachelor. The, the, the Golden, a, yeah. The Golden Bachelor. The Olden He's Bachelor. The Golden Bachelor. The Old Bachelor. And they're putting this on. <laughs> so it's like Survivor's gonna be on for like three hours, and um, whatever the other shows. The ba- the Olden Bachelor. 
and these other shows, I'm not going to watch them. But I'm, I am going to watch the hot older bachelor because he's like he's old, but he's hot. But he's old, but hot. So I'm going to watch it. Okay, I'm just just this is what's going on in the world. Yeah. Oh, anyway, so <laughs> Renee goes and she goes to get in her car and she falls and hits her. Like she, first she falls and like slips in the snow on mm-hmm. like or like ice. Yeah, hits her head. Mm-hmm. Hits her head. Then she gets in the car. The car doesn't work. The car doesn't start, and so she's just done. She's like, "Fuck this shit." I've I felt like she's felt before lately, so I get it. And so she's so just over all of it. She takes the bell and she rings it. And she's like, "I wish I had a different life." And then she puts her head on the steering wheel because she's just over it. And then it starts to snow. So I'm like, oh, "The magic is happening," because then it mm-hmm. starts to snow. So then she wakes up and she's like in this corporate office and she's wearing a fabulous outfit. The haircut. She has a fabulous haircut. She's wearing a fabulous outfit. Like she has a short, sassy do. It's like a power haircut. Yeah. She's like Barbara Streisand and the mirror has two faces. That was not. No, she was not. That was a fabulous Barbara. I've actually never seen that movie, but I remember when I Roger Ebert. In the Roger Ebert review, he, he said she became Barbara. It's Barbara. Fun. You have seen the mirror had two faces. It's a makeover movie. <laughs> Fun fact: If you were to, for instance, ask Chat GPT to uh, create a scenario in which Barbara Streisand were a gangster rapper. ChatGPT might hypothetically describe Barbara as having her hair pulled tight in a ponytail, wearing a snapback hat cocked to the side. That may have happened <laughs> had somebody put that scenario into ChatGPT in the past two weeks. Well, nobody, n- nobody here will be doing that because we're not supporting this AI. Nobody's <laughs> doing it. It may have already happened. Oh, uh, Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about myself. Uh, there may have been something like that I put into chat GPT. <laughs> uh, so, oh. Okay, oh. So then, so she's in, and she's in like a white outfit. Like it's a power, it is mm-hmm. a power outfit. And it's not like a fabulous belt. And then, so then she starts like pinching. Oh, she looks out of the window and she's like in Manhattan. And, and then she starts pinching herself. And then she looks in her purse and she finds her phone. Like she still has her same old phone. She, but she has like like her purse that she looks. It's like an expensive. I think it was a Birkin, or it was supposed to be like a Birkin. I don't know what that is. Uh, Different than a Merkin. How am I gonna know? Do I have to know what Birkin just died? Who? So Birkin, a Birkin is a. So the woman. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Birkin bag. Just a Birkin. No, a Birkin's like one of those, like it's a wig for your pubic that's hair. That's a Merkin. That's a Merkin. Oh, that's a Merkin. Oh. <laughs> okay. With an M. <laughs> so, so Jane Birkin with a B just died a few days ago. Okay. I don't mean any disrespect to Jane Birkin, but the, but the, but the handbag bag, is Birkin. Now, Birkin bags can cost Thousands and thousands and thousands, like we're oh. talking thirty thousand, fifty thousand oh. dollars. And so she had a bag that was supposed to be a Birkin, oh. and but she has her same old cell phone. She has her same old iPhone. But they're cool. And so, on the phone. so she looks and she finds. She's like, I need to call Aaron, her husband. And so she calls Aaron. But Aaron isn't answering the phone. I may have just and sent so, you both a link explaining what a Merkin is. What did you do? I just <laughs> sent you a video explainer of you what a Merkin me a video. is. I just sent it to both of you. A friend of mine just yes, sent it to yes, me like two did. days ago, so I had it up yes, ready. He did. Yes, he did. Great. Oh my god, who is Thank this you. person? Oh, I'm not even looking. I at like it. the picture of the dude. Oh god! All right, let me see. That's it. that's what a Merkin is. No, I didn't. I'm looking at. I'm gonna, I got it. Ongoing call. 
Uh, oh no, it's just like a photo. It's just not. <laughs> one of... Those are Merkins. Oh yeah. Okay. Intimate wigs of Victorian women. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and the guy looks like he's got a merkin on his face. Like he his head is where he's like farming the hair. Right. For the merkin. Yeah. Oh man. So okay. so anyway, so so she called Aaron. Aaron doesn't pick up. And, and then um her then her coworker walks in, like or her like yeah, her co her, her business co- partner. Yeah, we don't know it in this and moment, but it's her business partner. And he's like, "Are you ready for the meeting?" And she's like, "Who are you?" Jerry. And then he gives her a weird look, and she's like, "Oh, I'm just kidding." And and then she follows him to the meeting, and she closes the door, and you see like she's on all of these magazine covers, like she's faint, she's totally yeah. famous. You you realize she's the CEO of the company. Yeah. So she goes into like a. She goes into a meeting, and so she sits at the she sits down at the table, and they're like, "Well, we're gonna start the meeting," and they're like, "And Renee," and she doesn't even she doesn't realize that she runs this corporation, mm-hmm. and so they kind of play Jerry, her coworker, her co CEO, like just plays off like, "Oh, she's being so funny, she's a jokester." And so she finds out that, like, she started this food delivery service that basically – so it's probably, like, what's that um, del- delivery service? Uh-huh. Or no, no, more like uh, the ones where you have, oh. like, the recipes and you cook them. Like a blue, blue apron. apron. Yeah, like a blue apron. Like, she's supposed to be like that. Oh. And so okay. – and so, like, it's become, like, this total, like, you know, she's probably, like, a billionaire, close to being a billionaire. Nice. And so she, like, asks, you know, hey, she tells them, hey, I need to reschedule this meeting because she has no idea what they were talking about. So then she finds out that her mom is still alive. Oh, because her mom comes to visit. And so... Her mom walks in, and then she sees her mom, and she's like, oh, my God, I missed you so much. And then that's where I lost it and had to pause the TV Mm -hmm. and started crying for, like, five minutes because that touched touched a nerve because, you know, mom stuff. So then when I was done crying into my Taco Bell, I turned the TV back on, and... She's talking to her mom, and she has, says, hey, you know, mom, you want to go out for lunch? And the mom is like, nope, I got things to do. And the mom is very busy. The mom, yeah. has, a, the mom has a great social oh, yeah. life. And, and so um, the, the mom, her mom leaves, and so then she first does it – first she's – Oh, and, and her mom is like, oh, and I'm still at the house in Maplewood. And, you know, because she's like, because Renee was like, well, let's go home. And, my, the, and her mom's like, you don't live with me anymore. I live in the same old house, but you live here in town. And her mom leaves. And then uh, Renee remembers where she and Aaron used to live. Because before Renee went in the in the real world, before Renee moved to Naplewood, she and Aaron did live in New York for a while. Okay. So she goes back to her old apartment. Aaron, she walks in. Aaron gets out of the shower, and he looks at her and he's like, "What are you doing in my house?" And she's like, "Wait, what do you what do you mean? What am I doing in your house?" Because they're married, but in this world, we discover that they had broken up. And they'd broken up years ago. Yeah, like five years, I think they said. And not Yeah, much. I don't think he's gotten any action since then. And, and he's I did pissed that. That, he's, that she's in his house. He should be. She broke in. Yeah. And this is in New York, and she got like a spare key under the a flower pot. Yeah. I don't think you're going to find that in that- 
That's on him, though. He put that there. Right. So we find out that Aaron is a chef. So he what he wanted to do in the real world, he ended up doing in this world. And he's been a sh- and yeah, he's been a chef for five years as well. So then Renee walks out of the car and then CC the elf Renee walks out of the house and CC the elf is sitting in this fabulous car. Which I think is Renee's car. No, I think it was CC's car. Because the, the license plate says to the like jingle one or something like that. Oh, okay. What is CC? So is she a, is she a, a human being? Is she an she's angel? An she's an elf she's slash an elf. angel, I would say. I mean, she was an elf so in elf? in the in the store, but I think she was d- disguised as an elf because she's really an angel. So she's an angel, and, right? So so then or genie. So then Renee, Renee's like, "Well, what's going on?" And CC was like, "Well, you made a wish. You wish you had a different life. So this is your different life." And then uh, Renee's like, well, what happened with me and Aaron? And Cece's like, ask Aaron. And then Cece, then Renee's like, and what about my mom? And Cece's like, ask your mom. Like, ask you, ask them, and they'll tell you what you need to know. And then Cece's like, you know what? You need to live your life. You need to live your life. You need to start enjoying it. You need to embrace your life because life is short. And I'm trying to figure Looking up an angel. First, I listen. What is an angel? I came up with an angel investor. A spiritual <laughs> being believed to act as an attendant, agent, or messenger of God. This is not a religious movie. Conventionally represented in human form with wings and a long robe. She doesn't have that. And that's okay. what an angel well, investor is, too. An angel investor is that, yes. So, so then, um, CC. oh, so CC's like, Hey, so if you need me, ring this, be- ring the bell, and I'll come. But is this where she told her you can't make any more wishes? Though, like this is your wish, you can't make any more. I don't think she ever said that here. Okay. So, so, so then, um, she still didn't know where she lived, but then she remembered that Tasha worked at this restaurant. So she went to go see Tasha, who isn't pregnant, and Tasha has no idea who she is. But Tasha is very nice to her. Yeah. And so she orders some food from Tasha, and she tells Tasha what's going on, and then the next scene, she wakes up, and she's sleeping at her mom's house. Uh, Ray sleeping at her mom's house in the old house. Next, she sofa. wakes up on the yeah on the sofa, and, and then and then uh, Renee's mom is like, "Well, why didn't you just ask the doorman to let you in? You have a doorman. You live in this fancy, fabulous building. Why didn't you just have him let you in?" And, and then um, and her mother kind of wants her, her out of like, the house. Yeah, her mom's like, "I've got plans." Her plan's good. I thought her mom was getting laid because she's like, she's like, get out of here. She might be. Yeah, my I got style. plans. Now, her mom had some friends coming over, and they were making pre pack like pre packaged meals to give to the to the less fortunate for Christmas. Yeah. And, and so she's talking to her mom about Aaron, and her mom is like, well you broke up because you were too busy because you were starting your company and then Jerry showed up. So at first I thought that maybe she left him for Jerry. I thought, yeah, it it did seem like they, the writers left open that possibility if they would have needed it. Yeah. I didn't feel like she had any chemistry with that Sherry. No, I know, but I I think as a, as an audience, you don't really want her to. No, no. So I didn't really ever, ever consider that. Well, there's a a point later in the movie where he was acting a little weird and and there was going to be like another moment that revealed something she didn't know about. And I thought, oh, she's going to find out she's like engaged to Jerry or something. Right. Oh, Oh, and another thing I forgot to mention, her company right now is in trouble. 
Yeah. They were doing and really so, well. They had like a big opening, but like things have been, business has been falling off and they need a, a way to like start reattracting subscribers. So she, she needs a big idea. That's what that meeting was about. Right. So she's talking to her mom. She's helping her mom pack these meals for the people. And then she goes, oh, oh wait a minute. I have an idea. Why don't I like have a Christmas, like a, uh, do Christmas meals. Yeah. Basically, basically the thinking was if you buy one of the Christmas meals from my meal kit company, you'll also get a free one that will, or, or you get an extra one that will be given to somebody in need. Right. Which so I like Bomba's socks. Idea. Okay. Not a sponsor. And, and she's like, and then her mom is like, that's a good idea. And yeah, you can hire a chef and then, Renee is like, oh my gosh, ding, 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 ding. I can go hire Aaron because Aaron's a chef. And then her mom said something that also made me think that she, she had had something with Jerry because her mom's like, don't let Jerry talk you out of this. This is something that you really want to do. Don't let Jerry talk you out of it. Mm -hmm. and, and then Jerry's and then, a wet blanket. He really is. And then her it's mom gives her a key to her apartment. Her mom has, like, her extra key. And then she's like, okay, mom, where do I live? Well, so she asked Siri where then, she lived. Pardon? She asked Siri on her phone where she lived. Oh, it was Siri? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so then, so she goes home. She lives in this fabulous apartment. Like, totally fabulous apartment. And oh, she's yeah. looking around her apartment, and then she has a makeover montage with all of her clothes. Yeah. yeah. This movie had, like, three montages. I know. They knew that I was watching it. She was trying on her own. Clothes. Did I just set off one of your SIRIs? Because I just heard someone turn theirs off. Not me. Oh. Oh, no. I don't have one. I don't like those things. I have one. It wasn't mine, though. Oh, okay. Um, My phone has tried to speak to me. I don't allow it. Is it like, Kurt, what are you doing? I think I, I think I talked to myself one time and the phone thought I was, I was talking to it. And then when I noticed that I just stayed quiet. Was it like, yes, Kurt, how can I help you? <laughs> uh, I don't recall. But, um, so yes, it was a total montage, you know, she had like these sexy boots and she put on like outfits. So then the next scene, she's walking down the street in like a new outfit. She shopped in her own closet. Yeah. <laughs> her closet was insane. Like she had an entire jewelry case, not like a thing on top of the counter. Like it, when you go into an apartment store and they have that really long glass case that is the counter, it was one of those. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't think she needs all that. I do. Every girl you needs do? a makeover montage. Those boots were cute actress. that she had. I don't think Kurt is disputing the montage. I think it's the need of a, a department store level case to house them. But Kurt, yeah, that's that's my problem. But Kurt, if she has that stuff and you're dating her, she's gonna buy stuff for you too. Okay, if she yeah, if she already has that stuff. When I meet her. I, yeah, I just don't. Buy, I don't want to be buying this stuff for her. She's gonna. She's she's her own woman. Yeah, this is a well, woman, Kurt, like. that that is going to get back together oh. with her ex, who is a chef, but she is going to take care of you financially. So you're getting all the free perks of living with her, plus the extra food. Plus, she'll give you pot. I'm reading about her. Uh, this actress, Vanessa. Lengels, it says she came out as gender fluid and bisexual in her own documentary series. Wait, she has a documentary? What's this documentary series? It's called, it. it's called The S Word with Vanessa Leng. Is that an I or an L? Uh, Lengies? And Lengies. this is our heroine? 2017. Yes, she's gender fluid and look at bisexual. Hallmark. Yeah. Look at, look at the all new Hallmark. I'm a bit gender fluid because I have a purse 
um, I, I have this 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 change purse, and I lost it. Mm-hmm. And I had to go to like a work meeting, and I and I I had to I email these people, and I said, I lost my purse. Um, have you seen it? And they they lay a look around, they couldn't find, find it. I don't mean disrespect to gender fluid people, but it's but, you know. So men, you had a men, you had a purse. I don't have a purse anymore. You just call it a, if, if you're this. concerned about the terminology, just call it a bag. I bought this for a girlfriend I had at the time. She didn't like it, so I ended up keeping this change purse that had well, it was a grumpy cat was on it. A grumpy cat change purse. Yeah, I had some sentimental value, but I think it's gone. That's all right. <laughs> oh, I guess any listeners out there, if you happen to find it, <laughs> please a send grumpy it to cat, us. a grumpy cat change purse, not just a change purse, a grumpy cat change purse. Grumpy cat's not in anymore. Well, it's, I've had it for some years. All it, right, it's time to move uh, on, Kurt. What's that? It's time to move on from grumpy pat, grumpy cat. Yeah. I understand that. I'm I'm keeping things going. So listen. So, no, I meant so in life. Goes, I didn't mean on the show. No, but I mean in the show. I, we, we could keep going. <laughs> in life, I'm not going to move on from that. All right. So, so she, goes to see Aaron. she goes to see Aaron, but she's very nervous. She goes to his restaurant, and she's very nervous, though. And then this, this very attractive woman is like, so you're looking for Aaron? And... um. Then Aaron comes out, and she's a little jealous of the manager. Of We find out it's the manager, Ashley, but she's a little jealous, and we find out that, no, they're not date. He's not dating her. She's literally just the manager, and he's single, and part of the reason why he's single is because he devoted his time to his restaurant. And so then she's like, so listen, Aaron – I have the, you know, I have this idea for these Christmas meals, and I need a chef. Why don't you come and like partner with me, and we can do this? And he has to admit to her that his restaurant is actually closed because the food that they used it was like a farm to table restaurant, and his farm, the supplier, like went under, and so he now needs another farm. And so in, until that happens, he had to close his restaurant down. And so then she says, well, listen, obviously I'm, obviously I'm rich and powerful and I have a successful business. I can, int- if you help me out, I can introduce you to my suppliers and get you up and going again. And I can just connect you with them. Yeah. Which he actually agrees to. He actually agrees to do it. Well, this is a good time to introduce the term that we couldn't think of last week that Jaquetta uh, came up with for us, which is yes. what I believe the word is clitmatized. Yes. Because so we were trying to think of the, uh, the you know, the women in these Hallmark movies, when they see the guy and they'll just fall over and do anything for them, we say that they are digmatized. But we were trying to think of uh, what it is when it's in the other direction. So I'd say yes. that Aaron is now becoming clitmatized by Renee all over again. Because he he seriously, like, he'll get ready to say no, and she'll say somebody, and he'll be like, uh, 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 and, like, can't mm. move. Yeah. Yeah, it happens. Happens to the best of us. Yep. Well, not me. <laughs> Same. <laughs> right. Oh, you're not you're 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 ve- Kurt, you're very clitmatized by Renee, though. Yeah, you are, Kurt. Yeah. And I'm not that digmatized so. by Aaron. No. I'm clipmatized, but I can no. see us, you know, op- operating as uh, equal partners. She would, you know. Like, he's not bad looking, no. but his powers don't work on me. Yeah, I'm just like, eh. Like, if I had to, you'll do. Sure. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, in a pinch. Yeah. Because no. he's not ugly. No, no, he's not no. Ugly no. At all. I'll take hard. He's attractive, but just but doesn't, doesn't spark any interest for me out of the gate. Yeah, me neither. The Valentine's Day because you know sometimes, some sometimes like you see these guys in this movie in these movies, and it's like yum, 
Well, yeah. I can't believe he, I was surprised you guys didn't remark that he came out with his shirt off. You guys didn't have even didn't even have a response to that. Well, because his powers didn't work. on uh, Yeah, honestly, I don't even remember that happening. Wow, I do. When he came out of the shower. Oh, okay. Now I remember. Yeah, I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. But but yeah, I was I was like, meh. Like he's not bad, but. There's no hetero yeah, energy yeah. to this to this episode. Even even Les was the the woman the who the, the manager of the restaurant. Les Les mentioned how attractive she was. She was very even attractive. Yeah. yeah, the women in this uh, the women in this movie were very attractive, both both in a physical yeah. sense and in a uh, I would say like emotional sense. They all had something really fun and unique about them. Yeah, you know what? None of them were annoying. Yeah, like none of them. Actually, I'm on board. In this movie, other than Jerry, and Jerry wasn't even that annoying. Like there was no one who was really annoying. No, either. Jeff. Jeff can fuck right off. Jeff. But even he was yeah. he was annoying, but he wasn't like she could like shut him up though. I don't know. But Jeff like, was like when I, Jeff was like the cherry on the hot fudge sundae because I never like the cherry. So I, I take the cherry, I spit it out, or I eat it and just don't like it. I see. I, yeah, I, I like the cherry and a hot fudge no. sundae. And the rest of it is great. No, Jerry is like um, a can of tomatoes on a hot fudge sundae. He, I mean, not Jerry, uh, Jeff. Jeff didn't belong Jeff. there. Oh, Je- it's not Jerry, Jeff. Jeff, yeah. yes. Jeff. Just to reiterate, Jeff can fuck right off. <laughs> that was Jerry. I was going to say he's the Jerry on the hot fudge sundae, and that screwed me up. His name's Jeff. Um. Oh, so so um. So she then tells Jeff. she tells Je- um Jeff. Listen, Jeff, we're beyond Jeff. Aaron, no, oh Jerry. Jerry. Oh, she tells Jerry. Yeah. She tells Jerry. Listen, we're gonna do this. We're gonna do this business. And before he said anything, she's like, "No, we're doing this." Oh, he and he said, he said, "Oh, I'll." run the numbers and she was basically like no we're we're doing this regardless um and so oh what was oh she was gonna go talk to the board and she was like oh this is my first pitch and he was like no this is not your first pitch and she was like oh ha 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 i was just kidding i like how everything she would make up she would screw up but then she would come up like she was kidding and play it off i liked that yeah I wonder if the board ha- have if they have the power to f- fire her. Probably, if they're Probably. financially back to your careful. company in a large way, they absolutely can. She better be careful. Oh, so then she goes back and she tells she she talks to um she talks to Aaron about this and he agrees to do it and she's like, well, let's come up with some ideas. And we then find out that he spends every day, all day in this restaurant. He doesn't, he never has any fun. And she's like, wait, you don't play hockey anymore? Because I guess in the real world, he play hockey all the time. And she's like, you don't play hockey anymore? And he's like, well, no, I don't have time. And so she's like, okay, so you know what we're going to do right now? We're going to go and we're going to play hockey. And so they go to the the ice skating rink. Very Canadian. The woman is in this movie. What are the hots for? She's from Montreal. Don't know about the actor. So it probably is. So anyway. they yeah. so they start playing hockey and talking about food ideas. And he actually comes up with some good ideas. And they kind of have they have fun doing this. And she's pretty good at hockey herself, actually. The actress the actor is Canadian. I, I thought it was a bit of a misstep to if since this part of the movie is set in New York City and they're showing them lace up their skates to go ice skating. If they're not going to have them outside at Rockefeller Center, then you should have some nondescript indoor ice rink where they go. But instead, they were outside in a place that wasn't Rockefeller Center in New York. True. Took me out of the True, I forgot that that's like the go to place yeah. in New York. That's that's actually that there's a place in Brooklyn. Yeah, there's a place in Brooklyn in Prospect Park, right? I believe they have a, they have an ice skating rink there. 
but they weren't there either. Yeah, it, well, I mean, it just stood out to me because that's it's that's sort of shorthand for we're ice skating in New York. And so if you're not going to show that landmark, which clearly they're not because they didn't film this in New York, they filmed it in Canada, then just put them indoors. So, um, so, so they come up with some ideas and they have fun as well. And she's actually really good on the ice because she's doing like little like turns and stuff. Um, he's like, well, I can't just serve this food without you trying it. Why don't I cook the food and try it out and you can tell me how you like it? Why don't you come by the restaurant tomorrow? And so the next day she comes to the restaurant she brought him a couple of little gifts. She brought him like an apron, like an elf apron and an elf hat. And um, they're talking, like the, he cooks for her. They're talking. She's now no getting montage. digmatized. She, mm. Like you are getting digmatized. And then she goes in for the kiss and he stops her. What's that other thing that bah, 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 thing? Like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> that's, when, that's when he's clipmatized. Like, bah, 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 yeah. I can't talk. But she's, but um, he's like, nope. He stops her, and he's like, actually, I think I'm thinking about leaving New York. And getting away from all of this. And... Right. Where does exactly. that come to play? Because it's all sad. He's going to leave. She's like, don't leave. You love cooking. You're passionate about cooking. Don't, don't, don't run away. And then um, <laughs> later, Cece comes, oh, Cece shows up again. And oh no, oh that's right. No, she calls Cece. She she rings the bell and calls Cece. And, and she's like, I need another wish. I need Aaron back. And Cece's like, Nope, you got you've had your wish. You can't get any more wishes. Like, that's not how it works. So she's like, Cece's like, you just have to appreciate what you have in front of you right now. That's all you you that's all you can do. And so, um, oh, and this is also where she was like, and Renee's like, well, everything's kind of out of control. And Cece's like, you just got to go with it. And, and so, so then, um, they're in the office and Jerry comes up and Jerry's like, so here are these, here are, here are these papers, sign them. But she doesn't read them. Just signs them. Yeah, it's it's uh, the board's going to approve the expansion if they hit their subscriber numbers. And he was a little shy, shady yeah. about getting her to sign without looking at him. And I thought for sure he was going to turn out to either be stealing her company or there's another reason why he's being weird. Yeah, yeah, but that wasn't really the case here because he literally was like, "Sign him and hurry up and do it." Yeah, he's like, "You saw it last year." And so um, and then he's also like, and don't forget about the Christmas party tomorrow, where once again, she's like, Christmas party? And then she's like, oh, just kidding. So, um, oh, and then so then when they were talking about their expansion, she's like, listen, if we're going to expand, we need more people, right? Well, I know of this chef. Why don't I, like, she's, I think she even mentioned his name. She's like, why don't I get uh, Aaron to work for us too? And so he kind of tried to like poo poo it, but he did it. And one thing I did like about her, even though he would, he, Jerry would try to poo poo stuff. Um, was it Jerry or Jeff? I'm like getting Jerry. Him. Jerry, even though Jerry would try to poo-poo stuff, she would listen to him, but she didn't let him railroad her either. Like, she would speak up for herself. Yeah. So, um... The railroading happened later. Yeah. So... That? So, oh. she... Oh, so then she tells Aaron, well, why didn't you come to the party, and then you can meet everybody as well. And... 
she so then she invites her, her mom to come too. And so her mom, like, so they're getting ready to go to the party and like trying on dresses and stuff. And she's like, well, mom, why don't we spend New Year's Eve together? And mom's like, no, I got plans. <laughs> oh, I'm getting railroaded it too. include you. <laughs> mom, she's, she's going around the world. Right. Mom's she's all, going I'm not going to be here. <laughs> she's going to like Germany and Bali, Turkey and Japan, Malta. And yeah, and she's going to Bali, Antarctica. She's she's not stopping. She's going no. to this nudist and, beach. And, and mom, the I nudist heard the mom beach would. in Greece. And, and her mom was like, "Because it's all about seize the day, you know. I got I'm going to enjoy myself." And then her mom's like, "And I'm selling this house." Gonna, we just got more places. She's going to visit the Branch Davidian compound. So, mm -hmm. you know. She's going to go to Mars. But, but I'm yeah. telling you. So how much, do you think, how much do you think that her mom would get for that house in Maplewood? Oh, that's an, like I said, that's Maplewood is a very, is a very nice area. Okay. And look like a nice house. I don't, I don't know. It could be. Mm, a million? Could be around it. Half, I'm thinking half a million. Because she's like, I'm selling that. I'm selling the house and I'm going to go and see the world. Let me take a look. And and then she was like, and then, so then I love the fact that she was like, well, Renee's like, well, maybe I can come and see you on your trip. And the mom's like, okay, but like not excited about it. <laughs> like how many bedrooms is that house, do we think? Um, Probably what, like four, five? Probably four, I would guess. Oh, really? Probably four in like a maid's quarters. Yeah. No. Was yeah. it was it was that big? Yeah, it was huge. It was big. And the maids' quarters are generally never really big. It's it's like a small room off the side of the kitchen. Hmm. Oh boy, this is funny. I had something set in my Zillow for it only up to two hundred thousand. Nothing in Maplewood is available for that amount. Oh really? That's, yeah. Well, anyway, talk amongst yourselves. I'll look this up. Okay. I'll set it at a million let's see what i can find so basically oh, is, mm, okay yes so the, well here's no. a i'm sorry here's a four bedroom three bath house that is for nine hundred thousand. it looks it actually looks kind of comparable to what to their house okay so then if yeah. if in the real world renee and aaron sold that house they really realistically could sell that house and go live in brooklyn yeah start a business yeah Here's a four bedroom house that's four hundred seventy nine. So it depends, but their house is in great shape, also. So yeah, it's a that. beautiful house. Oh yeah, yeah. No, this this the, the four hundred seventy nine is way smaller than theirs. Okay, yeah. Okay, so they could probably get a million. So they realistically could sell that house yeah, and could. go and live in Brooklyn and be fine. What is the podcast where you can learn about uh, unions? About the Maplewood real estate market and about poppers. This a lifetime right of Hallmark, baby. <laughs> ass, <laughs> ass eating, Merkins. Uh, what else did we learn about? It's just Merkins. World travel. Right. And Santa Claus. What? Yeah. I, I, I gave the definition of an angel. Right. You get it off Black China. If your kid is going away to college this this fall, play them this podcast, and they'll have enough knowledge to get around the world. At least they'll know about Black China. I want I I this podcast to be the kind of thing that is feeding information into ChatGPT. <laughs> like, I just want so much junk in there that it just mucks up the system, and it's completely useless. Like, they're like, ah! <laughs> I, I have a fantasy and i was i was fantasizing as i was driving around i have a fantasy if our uh, podcast is somehow broadcast into the solar system <laughs> and there's oh, like yeah. you know life forms that are learning about how our world works by by you know listening to us which it, it's just feasible we, we cover right. a lot yeah well we really do <laughs> i like to make an impact well you know we're an all-purpose podcast Oh, okay. So Jerry tells um, <laughs> tells tells Renee, "Don't forget about your toast." And Renee's like, "What? Just kidding." 
And then she goes and she gives a toast and it's a good one. She gives a toast like Fran Drescher gave her union speech. The jig is up. It looked like a magic show was going to happen. The way it was, she was kind of <laughs> set up on stage with like right. lighting. She was going to put a rabbit out of hat or do that levitation thing. That's really weird. Oh, she should have do done that. that. Oh, and then they put the rings over, like when they make them go through the ring. I was looking at no. I was hanging out with a magician this this weekend. I, I and I told him I said, you know, I learned how to levitate, and it's really complicated. Complicated. He goes, yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> where were you? Where were you hanging out with the magician? Just in, in the middle Cherry of the air. Fr- a friend from the from the the fringe festival circuit. Oh, do I know this magician? The magician. Do I know this magician? His name is Tim Motley. I know Tim Motley. Okay, well, I hung out with Tim Motley. I know Tim Motley. <laughs> it's so funny because sometimes I feel figure. like I was like. Sometimes I feel like I'm a carny or something because I'm like I know magicians, clowns, fire eaters. <laughs> I know sword I... swall sword swall- swallowers, both kinds. Well, well, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's yeah. Oh, <laughs> so so she makes her toast. And then Jerry then gets into cock blocking because then she's with Aaron and they're like making googly eyes. And then Jerry comes in the, and he's in cock blocking mode. So he's like, we're going to London. Woo. And then she Renee's like, back. what are you talking about? And he's like, Jerry's like, well, you know, you signed those papers. We're going to London. That's what the papers were about. And then Renee actually genuinely didn't know because a she didn't read her contracts as we should always read your contracts before you sign them and b she's just taking over this body anyway so then aaron gets upset and runs out and renee runs after him and she's like listen aaron seriously i didn't know i really honestly didn't know that this was going to happen and Oh, oh, one of the things I forgot to mention is when she was talking to Aaron earlier in the movie and she was like, well, how come we broke up? He's like, you broke up with me. You initially said that you needed a break because your business was getting busy and the break, we took a break and we never got back together. And he's like, and I waited for you, but you just kept it moving. So this time she's like, he, you know, he's like, well, if you're going to London, then this is never going to work. And she's like, oh, no, 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 we can make it work. And he, he's like, well, that's what you said last time. And so I'm just going to cut my losses now because that, that's what you said last time. And then he kind of listed basically the process of him getting done. Yeah. He's like, first, it's gonna, you're going to do this. Then you're not going to have, like, first, you'll be able to. We'll be talking every day. Then you're not going to have time to talk to me every day, so we'll talk once a week, and it's just going to keep on going and going and going until it ends. He's not wrong. I always thought the break, if somebody said, let's go on a break, that they're basically breaking up with you. Just you know, yes. like it's, yeah. a, it's, it's a soft breakup. It's a, a pussy, it's a, it's a pussy wanna... way to break up with them. Yeah. yeah, and a break means basically you're going to go and sleep with other people. Because remember what Ross told Rachel? We were on a break. A break I'm basically friends. means I want to break up with you, but I know you're not ready to break up with me, so I'm trying to soften the blow, but really just dragging right. out the inevitable. And I'm just going to go mess around anyway. Yeah. It's like a break. Yeah. And so, um, so. I never had oh, anybody so, take a break with me. It was just over. The, I never got I a soft a- blow. I had someone take a break with me once, and I just went and got a new boyfriend during the break. So it was broken. <laughs> well, it was definitely a break. I've had a soft blow. Break still, you had a soft blow? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> anyway. I, I, uh, so, um, it's dirty. Oh, so she goes, so Renee didn't know what to do, so she went to Tasha's restaurant. Mm-hmm. And... 
So Tasha is like, well, we're closing, but I've got a few minutes. Here, have some pie. Have a slice. Do you want a slice of pie? And then this is where this is where Kurt got like clipmatized because she was like, <laughs> I want a whole pie. And I'm sure Kurt's size at his house was like boing, 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 boing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it was hotter. It was hotter for her or the pie. But I noticed she right. didn't really eat any of the pie, though. More for you. Well, you're not supposed to in public. That's Kurt, this is the perfect woman for you. She wants all the food, but she's going to let you have it. Right. That's great. Where is right. Because I could see them, and she'd, she'd order, like, she'd order the piece of pie, and her and Kurt would be at the table, and she'd, like, pick at it and take a few nibbles, and then Kurt would be like, you're going to eat that? And she'll go, oh, you can have it, and then he'd eat it. Yes, that's that. You know, you think, you know, you probably think I'm kidding. I'm actually turned on. That <laughs> I get it. Right. <laughs> you are, in fact, clipmatized. Um, I, I right. truly am. Let's let's put that in the universe. We, I, I want that woman. <laughs> I'm out of control. Okay. My computer's falling down. Yeah. Okay. I'm ready. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so she took a few nibbles of the pie, and then she's talking to she's talking to Tasha, and then you know, Tasha's like, "Well, actually, I'm pregnant." Oh no, no, no! Tasha was like, "No, Tasha was like, oh, I'm married and I have kid. I have a, a daughter. Kid. I have a daughter. She's a daughter." Because earlier in the movie, I don't know if we brought brought this up, but she Tasha was convinced that she was having a boy. Right. And so didn't uh, Renee buy a blue ornament and give it to her yeah. at that point? Yeah. Yeah. And so Tasha was like, I have a daughter. And mm-hmm. and then Renee's like, oh, wow. And then she's like, um, and my husband and I, oh, she's like, I'm not going to be working here much longer because my husband and I are going to move to the suburbs. And she's like, but I think I'm going to miss the city. And then Renee goes, or, no, you're not. Because even in the real world, pregnant Tasha told uh, Renee, I, I, I was living in the city and I couldn't wait to move to the suburbs. And I love living here in the suburbs. Yeah. So Renee told this Tasha, no, you're going to love, you're, gonna, you're not going to miss New York at all when you leave. Um, so then... Most of the suburbs... Are cheap though, yeah. but okay. Oh, this is when oh. Renee beckons Cece again. Yeah, and then she's like, you know, I, I feel awful. I realized I didn't appreciate Aaron enough, and I messed this up. And there's nothing I can do about it. And Cece was like, actually, no, you didn't mess it. She's like, this is going to end. This is, she's like, this isn't the real world, and it's going to end at midnight. So you can tell him yourself how you appreciate him. I, I got the attitude from Cece, like, F off. Go tell him yourself. It wasn't like, oh, he, it'll be fine. It was more like, <laughs> dude, like, go, go make something happen for yourself. Well, that's what she said, even. She even yeah. said, tell him yourself. Yeah. <laughs> she said, tell I, don't him yourself. Know if, I don't know if angels sleep. So you figure in a they don't need to sleep. No. Well, in a practical sense, they would be a little bit on edge. Well, think of all that snow that they're inhaling all the time. That keeps them awake, right? I got something going on. I want to know what reality this is. And uh, then, so so then, so she, so she was like, so Cece's like, this isn't over. At midnight, you're gonna go back to your regular life again. And so then. She was like, oh, good, and she was happy about it. And then she's like, oh, but what about my mom? I see dead people. Right. She's like, what about my mom? And Cece's like, well, your mom's going to be dead. This is when I started bawling, by the way. Me too. Because, like, I I had thought about it earlier in the movie when when you see the mom there. I'm like, oh, they're going to have to, like, kill her off in this movie to get back to, like, the original timeline. Right. And the mom was cool too. That was the yeah. thing. <laughs> the mom was really cool. Well, she gets to live in this reality. That's why I would have liked to know, like, how did she die? And they really showed a picture of her. She died. Well, I mean, a, it's something with me- medical whatever. Was it cancer? I think they yeah, hinted they at that. A, they showed how a picture of her. Cancer? At, remember, they showed a picture of the mom, and she didn't have any hair, and she was wearing a um, a bandana. Oh, I didn't see that. But then, so how did she not get get 
cancer in this reality because it they was could have been like different movie. circumstances. Yeah, it was an alternate it, reality. Yeah, but like the movie Frequency. Remember that movie where uh, Jim Caviezel is is talking to his, his father, Dennis Quaid. Like he's he's speaking in like a like a CB radio, but he's talking to him like years oh, before. Oh yeah, yeah. And he I tells him to stop movie. smoking. He tells him to stop smoking and it changes, so he ends up being alive. Like I, get, I, I thought about it at, well, as this scene was happening, where she's revealing that, like her, you know, she's going to go back to this other timeline, and her mom isn't going to be there. That this is kind of Hallmark's version of a multiverse movie. Yes, but Hallmark has been getting into the multiverses lately, kind of. So I, so I haven't. Yeah, I've seen the Lake House with Sandra Bullock, where they put the letters in the mailbox. Oh. Mm-hmm. And then, what what other ones have I seen? Oh, a sliding yeah, a doors example. with Gwyneth with Gre- with Gwyneth Booty Paltrow. I saw sliding doors. Mm-hmm. I've seen that. Which I love that movie. So, uh, Gwyneth Paltrow did a credible uh, British accent in that movie, actually. But oh, so so then Cece's like, uh, oh, so she's like, so Renee's like, well, what about my mom? And Cece's like, well, you got to go and say goodbye to her. And that's sad. So, yeah, because then she goes and she says her goodbyes, but her mom is like, you know, I live my life to my fullest and nothing is promised to you. And you need to make the most out of your life, too, and and make the most out of every moment. And then I started crying because then she's like, well, do you want to watch a movie together? And then you knew that was going to be it. So, yeah. I don't know, this, I got, this, like I said, I got a reservoir, but I didn't. It didn't. Yeah, I think it could have been. They could have squeezed more out of that. The, the, I mean, I thought this scene was played beautifully because the mom is basically giving a speech, not knowing that she's dying in another timeline, but just as, "Hey, I'm your mom, and this is important information you need to know that you don't have infinite minutes on this earth, so go out and seize the day." Right. Yes. Right. It, so, so then she wakes up. So, so she wakes up and her old hair is back and she's back at home and she goes into the, um, she goes into the dining room and there's a note and a fresh loaf of bread. So she takes, she takes mm. the loaf of bread and she puts it in a basket like she did at the beginning of the movie and she gives it to Tasha again and then she goes, and then Jeff walks in because Tasha's like, well, what are you doing here? You're supposed to be off today. And Jeff comes in and is like, hey, can you move this desk? And so then uh, Renee goes in and she quits. And she quits her job. Then she comes back and she buys a pink ornament and, and then... From Tasha, but then gives it to Tasha and is like, it's a girl. You're having a girl. And then she comes home and she gives Aaron a Christmas gift. And the Christmas gift is that she registered him in culinary school. And then she apologizes and she's like, you know, um, I'm sorry because I got so wrecked by my mom's death that I trapped us here because I was afraid to move forward in my life. But now I want to move forward in my life and we're going to sell the house and go live in Brooklyn. The end. And I was like, wow, this movie was very good. This was one of the best Hallmark movies I've seen in a while. Same. The lesson is you don't have to be a billionaire to be happy, but you do have to be a millionaire. Yes. There you go. That was the message. (laughs) <laughs> no, I, I think it's it it has a sweet thing. For me, it was um, well, um, because like, well, she's not a millionaire, but if they sell that house. Maybe they'll have one million. Um, yeah, but that's good. But no, I thought it would. Uh, to me, it kind of dragged a little bit, and um, so I don't think I liked it quite as much as you guys did. But you know, I said I I've expressed everything that I liked about it. I think it's true that the um. Oh, the sentiment that you could sort of hold on to something for a lot longer than you need to. Is it 
true thing as mm-hmm. they, as we saw it was, is you know he had they had broken up but he was still kind of holding on to that relationship uh, yeah. right for years yeah he was and, and yeah it's, yeah i liked it i really liked it well wow. if you want to find me you can find me on instagram at Kirkendall, K U R K E N D A A L, or you can get a hold of me at my website, leskirkendallbarrett.com. Jason. Please rate and review us wherever you listen to your podcast. Give us five stars. It helps other people find the show. You can also find us on social media at Facebook and um, uh, in, uh, Facebook, Instagram, and threads at Lifetime of Hallmark Podcast. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, and threads at Big Shot Jason. Kurt? Sure. I'm a guest on a podcast called Rank and Review. So you could look at rank, the letter N, review.ca. And I do a podcast with Larry Parsons, and we talk about animated fantasy movies like Bird Boy, Beowulf, Last Unicorn, things like that, Secret of Nim. I'm also on some. Uh, I'm also a guest on um, a friend of the show, Jason Debray. Where I'm on the Shelf Shedding Movie Podcast. You can look that up. And I'm on uh, Hi, Jason Oh yeah, he listens. And um, and I'm in the Indianapolis Fringe Festival beginning of September with the Jester of All Maladies, my show, and the end of September with uh, Behind Every Great Mariska Hargitay as a great Kurt Fitzpatrick at the Philadelphia Philadelphia Fringe Festival. Oh, and I'm actually going to be um, at the Minnesota Fringe Festival and at the Indianapolis Fringe Festival with my show, Climbing My Family Tree. Kurt, we're not going to be in Indianapolis together. I'm bummed. I'm going to have no one to harass now. You know what I thought would be the ultimate, your ultimate coup? I see you putting these pictures of these pool parties. If uh-huh. you ever got me to one of those pool parties, that would be like your, that would be far and beyond getting me to a uh, gay bar. We can get you to a pool good. party. Jason and I can get you to a pool party very easily. That would be that's easy, yeah. <laughs> that's, How would that's, you do it? that's very easy, and and you'd go to you'd not only go to the pool party, you'd have fun. You would. Mm-hmm. I agree. There's always cake there. I saw most of those guys aren't eating cake. More for you. Right. Oh, exactly. Exactly. Anyway, well, I need to go and study my lines for my show that's coming up in a few weeks. Oh, God, I do that too. And and I also need to like rest up because I've got a day of picketing tomorrow in the hot sun. Because I didn't know if you all read, but at one of the studios there were shady oh. trees, and they cut all the trees. Yeah, they cut the branches out of yeah. the tree so there's no shade. Yeah, it is anyway. shady, ironically. Right, exactly. So uh, until next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.